Hello and welcome to the fifth installment of Carolina Magazine. I'm Sam Davis. And I'm Maggie Winterfeld. Thank you for joining us. Well, the bars here in Five Points and in the Vista are the stomping ground of USC students looking to drink and have fun with friends. But when consumption turns to abuse, it can have dangerous effects on and around the USC campus. And in one recent case, a bad alcohol-related decision took the lives of four young people, two members of the Gamecock community. People think they're invincible. A lot of people do, and especially as college students, we're 18 to 22 years old, you know? We think this is the prime of our life, and it's just not worth it anymore. J.T. McManus is a longtime friend of Brian McGrath and Billings Fuse, the driver and passenger of the Columbia car wreck that killed four. Two months after the accident, he and others are now dealing with a new sort of feeling. For it to just like say in black and white that he was drinking so much, it just, it just kind of twisted the knife a little bit more. In late February, it was released that Brian McGrath, who crashed into a building on Shop Road at 90 miles an hour, had a blood alcohol content of nearly .16, twice the legal limit. According to a standard BAC chart, a man of Brian's weight, about 200 pounds, would have to consume between eight and nine drinks to reach this level. But factoring in time, losing .01 every 40 minutes, if the drinking took place over a three-hour period, it would take about 10 or 11 drinks to reach a .16. According to research at the Cal State Counseling Center, someone this intoxicated will have difficulty walking, severely impaired judgment and perception, possible increased aggression, and could even experience a blackout. Sergeant Miller of Columbia City PD worked on the scene of the wreck. He says people that impaired lose the ability to make the right decision. You really don't know until someone else can really take a look at you and see how impaired you are. People think that they're okay, but in reality they're really not. Because along with your driving abilities, your common sense kind of goes out the window with that too. So. Friends of Brian say there's no doubt that it changed their outlook on drunk driving. Once you lose some of your best friends from that, it really gives you a new perspective on life. And a $13 cab ride home is a lot cheaper than a DUI or a funeral or any, anything like that. But while Sergeant Miller hopes that this tragedy might save the next one from happening. We really hope that it really is instilled in their mindset and they really think about it and hopefully it changes some of the mindsets when people go out. Those closest to the victims who truly were affected think the message doesn't reach the rest of campus. It really could just go in one ear and out the other. Like, unless it happens to you, like you really don't, probably won't change your mind at all. You're not thinking about the consequences of what could actually happen and the devastation that it would take on not only your life, but your friends' lives, your family's lives, and everyone you come in contact with. It affects everybody. It took an abrupt ending to nearly a decade-long friendship, but McManus now knows not to take anything for granted. All the repercussions of a tiny little decision, even if it's, yeah, I'm just driving two minutes down the road, you don't know what's around the next curve. I mean, you never know. Another friend of Brian and Billy's who asked to remain nameless told me he plans to make shirts that say, B squared A D D. That stands for Brian and Billy against drunk driving. Coming up after the break, it's no surprise that there are a lot of underage drinkers at USC. But few realize that just one can of beer could affect the rest of their lives. Plus, a lot of younger kids, of course, come down with really good fake IDs that you just can't differentiate from. See how the fake ID industry is taking USC by storm. Oh, Stay with us. and feed the giraffes at Riverbank Zoo, Columbia.
The odds of a child becoming a professional golfer? One in 140,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to autismspeaks.org. Can I ask a few questions about the apartment on Park Street? What was your name? Is my name? Uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It just rented. My name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. It's not available. I use a wheelchair. And it's gone. Hello, my name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Housing discrimination really? is illegal. If you think you've been a victim, call us. Get up, be get, get up, be get groovy. Kid, what's up with you? Let's get up and play. Do something. Stop slumping like a lump all day. Get on up, come on. Get out the door. Let's shake that booty like never before. Let's run, have fun. Let's jump and groove. Get up and get that body up. Make it move. Get up, get up, get up. And be a player. Get up, get up, get up. Let's run, have fun. Get up and be a player. Get up and play an hour a day. Ouch. Sorry. For cool playtime ideas, go online. Just don't stay long. College is meant to improve students' future outlook. More education means better job options and a higher salary. But what many co-eds don't realize is that the underage drinking tickets, so prevalent among USC students, can continue to affect their lives long after they graduate. I investigated the crime and punishment of underage drinking. A bachelor's degree from USC should open the door to a bright future, but many students are hurting their employability before they even reach junior year. How? By getting cited for drinking under age. Alcohol violations resulted in 43 arrests and over 1,600 disciplinary actions at USC in 2010, including minor in possession charges. For the most part, defense attorney V. Craig Jones says it's not bad kids getting cited. It's their first time away from home. It's their first real sense of freedom. And they're doing what others are doing. Um, they see other people that are drinking and they think, well, it's okay for me. Regardless of the circumstances, students guilty of minor in possession charges face fines exceeding $400, an automatic four-month license suspension, and the possibility of 30 days in jail. USC student Mark Hyatt found out the hard way that college scholarships are also affected by alcohol violations. For the life scholarship, which is an in-state South Carolina scholarship, at one point I wasn't eligible when I had the grades to get it because of the charge. So far, Hyatt has racked up four citations, but he says he's not worried. No, because I think once you turn 21, it's kind of one of those things where it's, you were a kid and you made some mistakes. However, Jones cautions that alcohol offenses may be a red flag to some employers. Today's economy, where you may have 50 people applying for one job, if all things are even and you've got an alcohol violation, especially if you in some way or may get a company car or be driving a company vehicle, it can be an eliminating factor. Now, if it's a first-time offense, many students are able to get the charge wiped off their record by enrolling in a diversion alcohol education program. But this alternative comes with a hefty price tag. USC Police Captain Eric Grabsky says the fines and tickets are in the interest of student safety. And instead of pursuing criminal charges, the USC police often elect to send students to the Office for Student Conduct. When we send someone to the Office of Student Conduct, uh, that is what they get. They get help that they can't necessarily get in the criminal justice program. Sometimes they have to meet with a counselor, they go through an alcohol um, education program. So hopefully there's some uh, education and some help given to those individuals. Chris Coolidge is a student therapist at USC and he sees students with alcohol violations. I think we really try to do a good job of getting students some um, feedback about the risks and the potential consequences of their alcohol use. And that's an important step because, you know, many students are thinking of it just as an entertainment and enjoyment and a good social uh, activity. With college identified as much with studying as with partying, are underage drinking tickets really effective in curtailing the seemingly ingrained behavior? I think sometimes they are, and I think sometimes they're not. For Mark Hyatt, even four tickets were not enough to get him to stop. Yeah, it was never a, I'm going to quit drinking. It was a, I'm going to be smarter about how I do it. 
It's hard to tell if law enforcement efforts have reduced underage drinking or merely pushed it underground. In either case, it's in students' best interest to keep it off their records. While many of the experts I spoke to for this story generally agreed that it's unrealistic to expect underage drinking to stop altogether, they hoped that through tickets and through alcohol education programs, students would come to understand why they drink and at the minimum limit their drinking to a more responsible and safe manner. We all know that underage drinking wouldn't even be possible without fake IDs. They've been around in college life for many years now, but USC students are still finding ways to put a spin on the fake ID industry. Krista Bagley has more. Chica, chica, yeah, fake ID, fake ID, Today, it's easier than ever to get a fake ID. And I was like, no, you should totally tell Vogel, and that way you could buy his booze now, it's awesome. With advances in technology, and even with some help from YouTube, some USC students are now able to turn fake IDs into a fake ID industry. You gotta know the rules before you break them, otherwise it's no fun. Students like this one, who says he used to make and sell fake IDs starting his freshman year. I found an old ID of a relative and I just scanned it. It was an um, out-of-state ID, so... And back in the day, bartenders were a lot more flexible, so I just scanned it, toyed around with Photoshop, and it worked. He then decided to start a business, making two to three fake IDs a week and selling them for $35 each. And, well, they weren't pleased with them, I'll admit. It wasn't my best job, but from there on out, I really, to be honest with you, I didn't care about the quality of the ID. It's just I wanted money. And in the end, that money added up to be in the thousands. But while he was making each ID by hand, he says that other people in the business were making fake IDs with a machine. But those who had the machine make a lot more money than I ever did. He's talking about these, pouch laminators that have been featured in recent YouTube videos online, which make the whole process seem simple. Create and edit a fake ID on the computer, print it out on paper, bond it to a butterfly pouch with a laminating machine, slap on a hologram, and you've got what looks like a pretty legit ID. McLovin's fake ID may have worked in the movie super bad, but most bouncers say it wouldn't stand a chance in five points. A year ago, these girls come up to me with their, you know, wallets with their IDs in it, and I always ask for them to take it out, and they take out the slip of paper that they printed off their printer, and I'm just like, come on, girls. But even though Sharkies works hard to keep underage students out, Humphrey says that they still benefit from fake IDs. A lot of younger kids, of course, come down with really good fake IDs that you just can't differentiate from. So some of those people are a good business. Putting a whole new spin on the fake ID industry. I'm Krista Bagley, Carolina Magazine. Those involved in the fake ID industry are taking a huge risk. If you're caught buying, selling, or making fake IDs, it's a felony. Coming up on Carolina Magazine, see how alcohol abuse affected one USC student's academic life. Plus, don't be mad at him, he was blackout. Like, I did this stupid thing, I was blackout. Well, Blacking out. Find out the dangers and the consequences after the break. Those, uh, locusts? What? Those locusts? Yeah. I'm throwing rocks at some stuff, and next thing I know, Locus. Sounds like bad karma. You should try volunteering or walking a little old lady across the street or, you know, something good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Stay on the universe's good side. Volunteer, vote, get involved. I am stuffed. After that meal, I have got to pass gas. Uh, powder room's right there. No! Daddy's gas can kill us all! That's right. Toxic clouds, like the one I'm about to unleash, could make everyone deathly ill. Even that baby of yours. Be right back. Secondhand smoke contains hydrogen cyanide and other deadly gases. What a guy. Oh, he is a keeper. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. Everyone has friends. 
There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Can I ask a few questions about the apartment on Park Street? What was your name? Is my name, uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Uh, hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It just rented. My name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. It's not available. I use a wheelchair and... It's gone. Hello, my name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Housing discrimination really? is illegal. If you think you've been a victim... Welcome back. Well, freshman year is all about learning to balance schoolwork and socializing. And while most students are able to master this skill, others pay the price for hitting the bars instead of the books. Kim Gaffney has more. Eric Graff is a typical USC student until his grades slipped. He pledged to fraternity and got way too wrapped up in my social life. He went to Five Points every night and quickly realized he was having too much fun. My teachers told me that I didn't really need to bother showing up to class. So I should probably just focus on my other classes that I Still had a chance passing. Eric couldn't balance between his social life and academics and got put on academic suspension, meaning he had to leave USC for a semester. I wasn't ready for like all the responsibilities and freedoms that you're given. After some tutoring sessions at the Student Success Center, Eric was able to improve his grades and come back to USC. My life and all got a lot more organized this semester, especially after I met up with ACE. ACE, Academic Centers for Excellence, provides students with advising, coaching, study skills, and tutoring to help get them on the right track. Director of ACE Jane Bachnight says many students have trouble balancing between studying and partying. It's a, it's a new experience being in college, and you have to learn how to manage your time and manage your priorities and um, really put academics as your top priority. ACE coaches had over a thousand visits last semester and more and more students are asking for help. Jane says it's okay to have fun, but balance is key. And you're also in college to enjoy yourself, but you need to make sure academics is your priority because you're also here to get an education. Eric says he's thankful to be back at USC. Like whenever I got readmitted to USC, it was one of the happiest days in my life. Eric says he doesn't plan to go downtown anytime soon. I've learned my lesson there. Kim Gaffney, Carolina Magazine. If you'd like to learn more about ACE, you can head to USC's website at sc.edu and then select the Student Success Center's link. The freshman 15 might be a myth, but a recent study from Social Science Quarterly shows that students gain the most weight each year from alcohol consumption and poor diets. Five Points is a haven for USC students to party and drink all night. And the multiple restaurant options makes it easy for students to grab late night grub. Experts say drinking heavily a few nights a week may cause you to gain weight because alcohol spikes your blood sugar and makes you hungry. And since alcohol is metabolized like fat, having a shot of liquor is a lot like having a shot of butter. A lot of it has to do with blood sugar. When you drink a lot of alcohol, that can cause your blood sugar to fluctuate and drop, and it makes people hungry. Their blood sugars are low. So hungry munchies, that starts to happen, and people start to eat at that point. Zippel also says drinking water throughout the night can help curb your late-night appetite. Drinking alcohol is fairly common at USC, but some students are taking it to an extreme, consuming so much alcohol they lose memory of an entire night on purpose. They call this a blackout. Oh, let's black out, like, drink this loco. Frank Dzinski is a senior at USC and says he's had his fair share of blackouts. Tonight is his roommate's birthday. Women's pool. Women's pool. And he's drinking to celebrate. You pretty much just uh, lose most memory. Your motor skills aren't that great. Speech, speech, yeah, speech is impaired. Uh, 
you're not really there, you're kind of on autopilot. What Frank describes as blackout, neurologists call a state of amnesia. Blackouts are uh, what we would describe as uh, amnestic episodes, what we uh, call anterograde amnesia. And um, alcohol is uh, uh, basically it, uh, behaves almost as if it was a hypno hypnotic substance. And though it happens now on occasion, Frank remembers a time when it was the norm. It was a trend almost. It was what everyone was doing. You know, you woke up the next morning, oh, dude, you know, I don't, I don't remember what happened last night. I was so blacked out. Like, that was unacceptable. You know, it was almost condoned. But Frank is certainly not alone. I feel like a lot of people do that. Why? Because they like to be able to be like, ooh, I'm crazy, I'm going out, and I'm blacking out. Frank says a reason for some to black out is less accountability for their actions. Don't be mad at him, he was black out. Like, I did this stupid thing, I was black out. While Frank and other college students reach this blackout state on a regular basis, experts say this could be having an effect on his body. Significant atrophy of the brain, uh, significant nutritional deficiencies, a dysregulation of uh, yeah. blood pressure, dysregulation of uh, water balance, and uh, all of these lead to uh, severe metabolic problems down the road. And once you enter this state, Dr. Faber says the behavioral effects can also be dangerous. Violence occurs, oftentimes head injuries occur, and uh, participation in uh, potentially dangerous activities such as uh, um, uh, climbing or uh, even driving can occur. Don't throw it back up in there. Frank recalls a time where he spent the night in an unfamiliar place. But I woke up in my bed, so I didn't know that I slept outside. I had remembered being underneath the bridge and these guys yelling at me. And with Columbia's St. Pat's celebration on the horizon. To a great uh, St. Patty's Day coming up. Frank says five points could be in a blackout frenzy. Like St. Pat's coming up will probably be a surefire blackout for, for most. Now Frank later told me he did lose memory at some point that night. His total shot count climbed to around 20. Coming up on Carolina Magazine. See why some USC students choose not to drink. Plus, you can hear it start at the beginning of the street and continue up the street. Plus, find out how partying in Five Points is affecting some local residents. The odds of a child becoming a professional golfer? One in 140,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to AutismSpeaks.org. Tick, 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 massive heat waves, heat waves, tick, severe droughts, tick, 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 devastating, devastating hurricanes, tick, 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 tick. Our future is up tick, tick, to you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Get up, be get, get up, be get groovy. Kid, what's up with you? Let's get up and play. Do something. Stop slumping like a lump all day. Get on up, come on. Get out the door. Let's shake that booty like never before. Let's run, have fun. Let's jump and groove. Get up and get that body up. Make it move. Get up, get up, get up. Run, have fun, get up and be a player. Get up and play an hour a day. Ouch! Sorry. For cool playtime ideas, go online. Just don't stay long. and feed the giraffes at Riverbank Zoo, Columbia. You've seen the effects that alcohol abuse can have on the student body at USC, but can it reach local residents? People living near Five Points answer this question with a definite yes. Definitely noise disturbances. 
um, coming up, especially midnight and after. And you can hear it start at the beginning of the street and continue up the street. Um, in addition, littering, um, probably Thursday through Sunday, it's the worst. Beer bottles, cans, cups, and other litter can be found on most mornings in neighborhoods surrounding Five Points. Tiffany also said parked cars are left illegally on the street outside her house for several days at a time. But her options to stop this are limited. And you can either go outside and address it yourself, which isn't the best idea, in my opinion, or you can call the police and assume that they're still going to be there. She also says she expects the Five Point celebration this weekend to cause quite a ruckus. Some students see the college experience involving alcohol, while others do not. And religion can play a role in why students choose not to drink. Lauren Fulp has the story of two sisters whose faith keeps them sober. While having a college experience means one thing to some students, sisters from Irmo, South Carolina, Ariel and Carmel Matin, do not see drinking alcohol as part of theirs. We run into people and say, oh, you know, let's do lunch or this, or what are you doing tonight? Like, for me, that's the experience of college. And believe the definition of the college experience is different for everyone. It can be so different. It's so subjective, you know? Just like the life experience can be subjective. <laughs> like, some people like that life experience when they're jumping off a bungee jump. Three, two, one. But not every life experience is the same. So then to me, I think that not every college experience is the same. Although there are other religions which forbid the use of alcohol, the sisters follow the Baha'i faith and its messenger, Baha'u'llah's teachings. He says something that really hits my heart. It says that alcohol consumes the mind and makes people behave in acts of absurdity and barbarity. But they also choose not to drink by choice. It's never been a, a great propensity of mine to say, oh, I wish I could. I probably wouldn't enjoy the taste or the atmosphere of drinking. And their choice doesn't stop them from going out with friends and having fun like any other college student. I never drink alcohol. I'll get a Sprite or something. But um, I think just finding that balance and moderation is really important. The sisters accept those around them, even if their beliefs aren't the same, while having their own version of the college experience. Lauren Falk, Carolina News. Well, that's one way to avoid all the negative effects of drinking. The other way, of course, is to drink responsibly. And if you are going to go out and drink this St. Pat's weekend, we hope you do it safely. From all of us here at Carolina Magazine, thank you so much for watching.